Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what is the future of professional grade software development? So let's get into it. Well, this is, this is a very good question. So the way that I look at it is that the trend that we are seeing in IT today is, and it has been going this way for quite some time, in order for me to accurately be able to give you a good, like a good answer to this, we have to go back a little while. So if we go back to the earlier days of programming, it used to be the case that computers was not something a single per like a private individual could afford. It was something that most primarily provided to institutions such as the military, as an example, where you had, or researching and things of this nature, where you had to have some type of either government backing or a company of some sort to pay for these extremely expensive machines. And those days, in those days, you mean the computation power was a fraction of what you have on your phone today. And the people that was required in order to run all of this stuff, they weren't really what we call necessarily software developers as we know them today. These were highly, highly educated people within physics, mathematics, things of this nature. They kind of lay, the, you mean, they, that's where it started out, like in the academic world, right? And as time progressed, we refined our computation, like the, the tools that were at our disposal, so that, we, I mean, we built higher and higher level languages until such a point where people who, with a, you know, you, you, a, a profession or a, a field of study called computer science kind of emerged from this. And from that point, we had started a journey where we went from having only highly, highly educated elite, elite people from the academic world doing all of this, we kind of, well, I'm not saying dumb down things, but we made things more accessible to the point where slightly less educated people could actually start doing, like you could actually streamline, you could streamline a process for creating people or educating people who could do it in a broader fashion. And that's where we get into the, the discussion about like, uh, you know, well, not necessarily the IT boom, but you had system levels programmers who were working primarily in the lower level languages in comparison to what we have today, and then we kind of built from there. And from that point on, a few years in, further into the future, closer to what we have today, you had higher level languages such as, say, Java, C Sharp, and things of this nature, where you know it became so accessible and computation, or rather personal computers, became so affordable that a lot of companies actually used it. Then people actually starting having com having computers in their own homes, and that's where this boom came, where people realized that oh, these computers and all these tools, thanks to the amazing work that these people in the past have put into creating better and better abstractions and better and better tools and better processes for producing things that are, let's call them more accessible to less highly educated and less, less you know, well, I'm, I'm not saying less educated, but it, they streamlined a process and made it possible for more people to get into this. I, that work that they put in there, that's why we are today, that's why we today have a much lower education requirement in comparison to what it used to be, even though it's still by many people's account is fairly high, it's still not at the same level as it used to be. I mean, it used to be that you had to basically be a doctor, have a doctorate in order to work on a computer. But today it's, you know, people like myself can do that with, you know, can work with computers and do a lot of advanced stuff without having to have that extent of knowledge within computer science. So with that trend, there is one red thread. And that is that we are going from a very, like we, the things that we can do with computers uh, is basically increasing. The more we, we can do more and more stuff. And these, with that, we also are getting higher and higher abstractions. We are basically streamlining our processes to make it more accessible for more and more people to actually get into this and produce some type of meaningful value. Because at the end of the day, why we're doing this is because of business value. We want to produce some type of innovation for other people or for industry to either make it in the marketplace or to just for you know, noble reasons, like human, humanitarian reasons, if you will. And as things progress, we notice that we get these higher and higher level abstractions. And what I believe is that today we have this, we're in this kind of transition period again, where 
I mean, this is con this is continuing. We are like to, developers as as of today are also doing the same thing that did all those years, you know, years back, where we are still creating. Like we we're building on, you know, I stand on the shoulders of giants, if you will. We are building even higher abstractions now to streamline the process even further, and we're getting into this era that this kind of first time, and this is the first time this is kind of happening, where. We have to say as WordPress, uh, where you can basically empower an individual who has absolutely no knowledge of computer science or software development or anything like that to build something meaningful, to make something meaningful, either with just drag and drop things or the just being able to use a configuration of some sort of an off-the-shelf product that professional software developers have been part of building. And that's exactly what I think is happening with uh, our profession. My guess is that we very soon will be in a position where the promises, the false promises of most of the people on the internet today who claim that they are gonna teach you how to be a software pro programmer in three months, will start to become truer. I'm not saying true, because I'm gonna raise my finger, I'm gonna say something. And that thing is that I don't think we will ever get to a point where high like that where it's just pointless to learn professional grade software development but I think that the definition of what it is re what's required for somebody to be able to work in IT with programming is going to change basically my suspicion is that people with a very in-depth understanding of programming the way that we work today are going to be the people who are going to provide these tools that most of the people who are, let's say, in the coming 10 years going to be be using in order to produce some type of business value. Because the fundamental truth is, and this is a harsh truth for a lot of people in the industry, you don't need a professional, highly educated, super developer to do a lot of the stuff that you want to do in software. Sometimes you need these people, sometimes you really do, but a lot of the times you need somebody who has an interest in learning and has the correct tools and has a very well-defined responsibility area to do a lot of that stuff. A profession that I ha is very similar to what I'm talking about is, um, is a solution architect. A solution architect, I have a few friends who work as this, where, I mean, they basically have a understanding that like I mean they a lot of my junior co-workers out code them every single day of the week but the thing is that they still work with code they still work with off-the-shelf solution and integration platforms and other products that some other companies built for them where they just provide the business logic and some simple integrations here and there I mean that's enough for them to make a living off and the companies who buy in these services I mean that that's what they need to get done that's the stuff that they need and as th this is just kind of beginning now, but I with th trends such as you know cloud providers, Kubernetes, and like um, containers and all of that good stuff, and this push towards serverless, I really do think that we are going to end up in that situation, and that where professional grade software developers, I mean, if you want to be a real programmer or the sort of programmer that we have today you're going to work on solutions where or you're going to work on projects either where it's really really required for you to have this really in-depth knowledge of computer science or you're going to be the sort of person who provides these abstractions and sometimes maybe company specific libraries so these, this sort of stuff for the bulk of the people who are actually going to write the code and my guess is that that is basically going to end up with the bulk of people writing software being people with a basic understanding of coding by today's standards and the people leading or mentoring or people who are basically overseeing that process are going to be people like myself or people even you know a lot smarter than me who simply take on the tech lead position where we simply make sure that you know we might have a lot more teams in software development today and it is our responsibility it becomes our responsibility to act as the architect the mentor, the senior, like all of these, the tech lead, the tech and technical sales representative, you become this, this person who, where, which the company hires because your knowledge of software development is so high and with good communication skills and so forth, what's, it's actually possible for you, for the company to trust that they're going to get good results because they don't have to hire like 10 super developers. They can hire one super developer 
and have nine people who kind of know what they're doing because that one person is going to raise the bar for like raise up the, the rest of them to the point where they can actually produce real business value. That's at least what I think is going to happen. So what I want you to take away from this is that if we follow the trend of how the industry has gone from back in the day where only a few select people wrote programs that were extremely complicated and extremely you know, basic to the point where we are today, where this all the, like we see like layers and layers of abstractions and streamlining of our development process, getting to the point where people with almost no coding knowledge can produce something meaningful. I think that trend is going to continue to the point where most software development is going to be very little about all the infrastructure and all the things that we have today that surrounds the development and it's very likely going to be as simple as you either have an integration platform where you drag and drop the different system or like architecture as a service if you service as you will serverless is a good example of this where you don't really need to know all the things around it to be able to work on the product. All you really need to know is some basic like you need to know a coding language and you need to understand how to implement a function. That's basically what you need. And then you can have maybe one or two highly experienced programmers that make sure to, to orchestrate all of this on top because like what the work that these solution architects or people who know some basic code are going to focus on is just to implement the actual business logic. And with a overseeing type of programmer who has a lot more experience, you can actually hire one of the, these people and, hire a, and save a lot of money by just hiring less experienced programmers. Have a great day.